Deepstone Crypt is the featured raid of Christmas weekend, which is supposed to be the best time to go grind encounters for red border weapons. Not, you know, not Christmas weekend, but when it's the featured raid. Uh, people have not really been having much luck with that. Hopefully Bungie's gonna buff those red border rates. But in the meantime, let's take a look at some top tier weapon rolls for Deepstone Crypt, so that if you do come across something good, you can just say, screw it, and keep the roll that you have instead of grinding for longer. A big question here is probably going to be, Dado, do I really need to re-grind these weapons if I already have god rolls? And the answer is, it kind of depends on the gun. I'm going to address each weapon individually. The origin trait, Bray Inheritance, gives you some ability energy whenever you deal damage. Not a bad origin trait by any means, but it is definitely something you can live without if you just cannot be bothered. Let's start with ye old kinetic weapons, Succession the Sniper. I think fans of the channel probably know how I feel about snipers already. They are currently mid as hell in PvE. Now there's a chance that they get some love in Lightfall as Bungie is looking to shake up the PvE meta, so there is some hope. Snipers are typically used as boss damage weapons or weapons for beefier targets. In the first major column, the perk to get is still very much Reconstruction, automatically putting shots into the gun, overflowing the magazine to double the normal capacity, stack a minor magazine perk on there, and you are golden. Everything else in the column for PvE is not worth getting at all. If you really want some PvP action, I'd probably be looking for moving target or no distractions, but I don't really think people consider this a PvP sniper, and neither do I. In the second column, we got options, namely Vorpal Weapon, Focused Fury, Firing Line, and Recombination. Mathematically, I believe best to worst is Firing Line, then Focused Fury and Vorpal are almost equals until a certain point, and then Recombination. But each perk is situational. Firing Line, if you're solo, it's completely worthless. Focused Fury is not great if you can't hit consistent crits. Vorpal is only on bosses, but it's probably the most reliable perk. And Recombination can be good for outside of boss damage. Now, what I will say is that no one is going to chastise you for having any one of these perks on this gun. But what ultimately becomes the best perk will depend on two things. Number one, if snipers get buffed to the point where they are usable again. And number two, what kind of bosses will be using snipers on. I think Vorpal is the play for now, as it is the most accessible perk, but if there's a good firing line boss in the future, swap to that. In terms of the regrind, this is medium high on the do not regrind list, as the previous god roll is still considered a god roll in the main scope of the game, but Vorpal, Focus Fury, and Firing Line are all options now. Probably the highest on the do not regrind list goes to Heritage, the Slug Shotgun. Having its 15 minutes of fame during the brief double slug DPS meta, the PvE god roll for this gun is pretty much the exact same as the previous one, even down to the minor perks. Your choice of ranged barrel, assault mag for the rate of fire increase or a magazine perk, reconstruction, and recombination. Here's the thing. Focus Fury is mathematically better than recombination against bosses specifically. But when it comes to every other part of the game, recombination has way more utility. And it's not that far behind in damage tests anyway. This weapon is used in PvE pretty much the same way as a sniper is, good for killing big boss targets or beefy enemies that need to be taken down a notch. If you have a god roll of this already, chillin' in the vault, infuse it up, and I think you're pretty much good to go, but I can understand if you want enhanced perks. How about some energy weapons? This is where we're looking at some regrind potential, but just barely. Trusty is a 260 RPM Solar Scout, and when this gun first came out, it had some really terrible perks. It still kind of does, but it used to, too. Me personally, I'm looking at Rapid Hit in the first column, not huge on reconstruction on primary weapons here, and most of the other perks don't really interest me. Second column, the only PvE thing that I want is Incandescent. That's it. Redirection got changed so that the big shot I think now only is consumed when you shoot an orange bar or higher enemy, which is both good and bad, but otherwise, most of the stuff here is dog. Maybe swash if you're running some sort of build, but who's running a melee build with like a scout? 
go for arrowhead break and accurized rounds for some recoil control and range. This is a big regrind gun, mainly because the first iteration of it was terrible, and honestly, if it weren't for incandescent, the second iteration would also be not that great. Posterity. Arcan Cannon. This gun can get some ridiculous rolls because Volt Shot is in the first column. So you can get Volt Shot and another damage perk. Frenzy, Rampage. You throw on some range perks in the minor column. That's a hell of a gun. But here it comes. It's a 180 RPM hand cannon. Oh, 180 RPM hand cannons in PvE have never been that popular. And that's because their raw damage just not very good. They hit like wet noodles, and I don't care how many god tier perks you're going to put on this thing. I do not want to use posterity at all. Give me the Ikelos SMG for Volt Shot, and I'm chilling after that. The regrind factor here is high because, again, the first version was not that great, but if you didn't get this pattern, eh, I wouldn't really blame you. Power weapons. We got Commemoration, the Void Machine Gun, 450 RPM. Lovely weapon. Had some good perk rolls to it back in the day. Little Feeding Frenzy Rampage action. Great stuff. Bungie gave this thing some love with the update. Many perk options to choose from. First column, Reconstruction. Still around, but you got Subsistence. Fourth times even if you find some good targets for it. I mean, Dragonfly is in here too. Like it wandered into the wrong meeting room at the office, but nobody noticed. So they just stayed. Second column. Rampage is still kicking around, but you also have Firing Line and Killing Tally. So you can do some sort of reconstruction, Killing Tally type deal for a giant magazine and bonus damage until you ditch the gun. I actually got one of these from the spoils chest, pretty happy with that. Reconstruction Killing Tally is definitely one of the top rolls to chase, if not the top roll. But El Clasico Reload plus Damage Perk is going to be just fine here. You can go for range or stability in your minor perk slots, depending on your preference. Although magazine perks are also acceptable. Regrind factor here is medium. If you had a good roll from the past, or just have another good void machine gun like Corrective Measure, then you could probably skip it. But this weapon can absolutely get some good stuff here. Bequest. Another basically completely ignored raid weapon, Arc Sword. Things in Sword World, not really that changed up in quite a while. First column, Tireless or Relentless Strikes to restore ammo. Really tough to go wrong there. I suppose Unrelenting isn't an awful choice, but it's not what I'm going to be taking. Second column, the majority of the stuff here is good. In fact, the only thing I wouldn't be taking is On Guard. Pretty much everything else is a respectable choice to make. Surrounded, a bit situational, but not bad, not my favorite. Assassin's Blade, a pretty easy pick. Chain Reaction, kind of more of a meme pick, but it's flashy and explosions are fun. Demolitionist for the grenade lovers out there, although you don't really reload a sword, so eh. And then Vorpal's not as great, but 10% bonus damage with no activation, not the worst thing in the world. And One for All is rarely a bad choice considering the uptime it can have, but not as good for something like boss damage, unless you got some ads around you. Regrind factor to me is low, unless you're a big sword enthusiast. I think most of the perks are the same as last time. So if you have a good one from the past, like, I think it should be all right. That's all the guns. Again, as of this video, red border drop rates, quite poor. Fortunately, a lot of the encounters can be cleared very quickly. Two minutes or so, all of them except for the third one. I think I'm just going to hope that Bungie buffs the drop rates next time this rolls around as the featured raid of the week, but you should still try to do one deep stone a week to buy the free red border from the chest at the end so you can maybe guarantee yourself a weapon over time. That's all from me. Have a great holiday weekend. I'll see you next time.